and welcome to Aftershock Online. Today, I'm very excited to have our guest, Adam Henry, with us. Uh, Adam is an Arizona native. Uh, he graduated from ASU, started as an entrepreneur in web design and development in 2014, and uh, he ended up purchasing some adventure companies, both Duck Out and Discovery Treks, uh, where he spends his time now. They're incredible businesses. I'm very excited to talk to you about how you uh, adjusted in your entrepreneurial life how you got into the adventure uh, world, but Adam, thanks for being on today. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about uh, when did you graduate from ASU? Uh, so I graduated from ASU. Well, actually, I finished classes in 2012, but I was I actually walked in 2013. The way it worked out, I growing up in Arizona, we have the Rio Salado dual enrollment in high school, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do that, and I didn't have to take my final semester of kind of random classes for college. So. Technically 2013. And then when you graduated, what did you do right after? Um, so when I graduated, immediately I actually went and I was working for a company that was started by my parents. Um, long story short, I was doing web development for a company that, right now I was just doing general software development for a company that um, offers online defensive driving courses. So like if you go get a ticket, you can go take that course and get it off. Well, long story short, we ended up opening our own versions of that, and I ended up being pretty much the office manager running day-to-day -day operations for our two small businesses. So I did everything from the accounting, customer service, uh, marketing, pretty much everything from start to finish was more or less my job. Um, so I did that for a while, which is really what ended up getting me into the web development side. So because I had the software development background, and then the two businesses that we owned, those driving schools, needed new websites. So I ended up learning the, uh, the small intricacies associated with web design and moved into that. And that's how I really got started in the web development world. Okay. And did you have any background with your college career with that? Or what did you go to college for? So I went to college for entrepreneurship. So okay. that was, is at the time, now they do actually have an entrepreneurship degree. At the time, it was a business management degree with a focus on entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of my final classes in my junior and senior year were entrepreneurship related. Um, I started doing software development when I was about 16, though, so I already had a background in that. I was pretty sure I was going to go into IT once I finished uh, once I finished up at college. That was pretty much my plan. Wow. So that first job with the traffic school kind of gave you a real-world experience with business, having to manage all the different types of the parts of the business, right? The finance, exactly. the marketing, all that. What was your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part. So... I think my favorite part is truthfully dealing with people. Like there's, it always creates the most difference in your, your interactions throughout the day. I mean, accounting is, is accounting, marketing is marketing, but people always throw a little bit of different stuff for you. So it kind of keeps you on your toes as you're, as you're dealing with them. And that is still the case today, um, working with my current businesses. So uh, it was always very interesting <laughs> handling people who were calling and they were already immediately upset because they had a ticket and so getting them to a place of not yelling at me because it wasn't my fault and then wanting to work with us <laughs> was always a process and it was certainly a, a learning experience that really helped me um, just deal with people better in general yeah. and so that's that's, I think, what um, what I enjoy most about being in business. So it was, yeah, it's not my fault you were in the HOV lane when you weren't supposed to. Right. Let's <laughs> let's calm down and get you, you taken care of. Exactly. Okay. Um, so you're you're doing web design. I mean, what gave you the idea to get into the adventure world? Is your background in hiking and that kind of thing, or what? Yeah. So I so I actually grew up. Um, I was a Boy Scout. I'm an Eagle Scout. So I grew up backpacking throughout Arizona. That was one of the things I did. Just Generally speaking, growing up here, um, we would go out pretty much once a month and do a, a multi-day backpacking trip with our um, our Boy Scout troop. And so then I've done other kind of longer excursions and other places, hiked the Inca Trail up to Machu Picchu. Um, so I've done a, a number of things like that. And so I was doing web development, um, and one of my longtime friends actually came to me and said, I have this idea, I want to be a hiking guide, and I know that there is a market for it, but I don't have a website, I don't know how to make a website, and I would like to go into business with you. If you make the website, we'll go 50-50. And so that was really how I got into it, because building websites is its all well and good. It's a good job. Um, it's not quite as fun as hiking in the Grand Canyon. I, I can appreciate <laughs> that. Um, so, yeah. So when that opportunity was presented to me, it's like, well, I, this, I like doing this stuff on my own time, so I'd love to help other people do it. It's one of the coolest jobs I've really ever had. 
So when you first started out, you were the one taking people on tours as well as putting together the website. Now, are you still taking people on tours now? So I don't really do much in the way of guiding. So at this point, when we first started out, um, I kind of did some guiding, but most of what I did was admin related. And then um, the, the other gentleman, my business partner, Chris, he did most of the guiding from the get go. At this point, we've now grown and expanded and we have um, anywhere from six to 10 guides working for us at, at different times. So um, obviously the season kind of fluctuates and they all have their own specialties, but uh, we do now most of the time have our guides running the tours versus us, which is kind of nice. It's kind of the goal, I suppose, when you start a business is to be able to take a little bit of a step back yeah. so that you aren't working in the business and you can work on your business. Absolutely. And so, and that's really, uh, that's really where we're getting to at this point. That's great. Now you have very two distinctive brands. You have Discovery Tracks and you have Duck Out. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit what differentiates them. What are the different experiences there? Yeah. So, so Duck Out was the first company that we started. So we actually opened Duck Out at the beginning of 2016. And the premise behind Duck Out was that we wanted to have a company where um, it was really hammering on the five star customer service aspect that you would expect from a high end resort. And so we really give all of our duck out tours that all inclusive high end customer service feel. Um, everything is all inclusive built in. You really shouldn't have to take your wallet out for anything outside of souvenirs and hopefully tipping the guide at the end if you did a good job. Um, but really that's, that's what we try to cater for there. So it's, if you're here in town and you're looking for something to do, we'll take care of everything top to bottom, all of the logistics, all the planning. We usually have a, um, even like a, a meal credit built into the cost of the tour. So we'll be able to stop at some sort of kind of local Arizona restaurant that will give you a kind of a feel of what our culinary experiences are here. It's a, a little bit more of the Arizona flair compared to uh, uh, New York or something. It's very, very different when you're going up to Sedona and you have some food in Sedona versus having a, a slice of pizza in New York or something. So mm -hmm. um, so we really try and integrate the, the Arizona feel into those duck out tours, but they are more of a high end style tour. Um, so I would say that most of the people that go on those tours are here in town that are just hanging out, enjoying the weather, being here during the nice time of year. Um, Discovery Treks, on the other hand, we purchased Discovery Treks. We were actually, um, we were approached by Discovery Treks in 2018. And so we purchased that. It was a natural expansion to what we wanted to do. We always wanted to get into the actual backpacking side of things. And so when that opportunity presented itself to us, it was a no-brainer. Um, so we bought Discovery Treks, and Discovery Treks really focuses more on people that are coming here to backpack. So we aren't necessarily, it's less people in town that are here just being tourists. This is more of a four to six months in advance, you're planning this, you're training for it, and you really want to go on an aggressive backpacking tour. And so that's, that's really the main differences. So Duck Out's going to be kind of all-inclusive, single-day excursions, and Discovery Treks is going to be more rugged, hardcore, three, four, six-day backpacking tours through the Grand Canyon, um, Sedona. Soon we're going to have a Sedona permit. We're soon to have a Yosemite permit. So we're going to be, we're expanding as well. And, um, but those are going to be more rugged backpacking tours where you are carrying your stuff. So that's, that's great. Well, for someone that's never been in an experience like that, where they've, they've gone backpacking, let's talk about the Grand Canyon one. What does a, a six-day tour uh, look like? So a six-day tour in the Grand Canyon, uh, we, have, we have a couple options. I would say our most popular option for our six-day tour is going to be our Tanner to Grandview six-day hike. And so we call it a loop um, because it goes down, over, and then back up out a different area. Um, but it, So it's really not an in-and-out hike. We're using multiple different trails. On that Tanner to Grandview hike, you're going to be doing 35-plus um, miles of backpacking over the six days. It's going to be very rugged. Some days could be three miles. Some days could be about 10 miles. Um, so the six-day hikes are really more so for the advanced backpackers, people who have done a lot of backpacking already or are already in really great shape doing triathlons or Ironman, stuff like that. You, re you really do want to be in good shape for a, uh, a six-day backpacking tour. We do have shorter options, though, as well, that are only three or four days, mm -hmm. and those are much more doable for um, the, the average hiker, the, someone who's not in the gym every single day wearing a backpack all the time but is still reasonably active, likes to hike, can carry the weight, and three to four days isn't, isn't hard necessarily. Six days is definitely going to be more of an advanced hike. Makes a lot of sense. A three to four days seems to be more like that bucket list or someone that's I've always wanted to do this, but maybe isn't 
uh, an extreme hiker, exactly. but it's like, I'd love to do it. And they bucket list it, but they can actually do that without um, exactly. Yep. being able. So we can still get them in there, still get them down to the bottom of the canyon, see all the amazing things there are to see. Um, you're just not nearly as strained over six days to, to get all the way there. That's great. So you said Sedona, and then you've also got Yosemite. Tell me a little bit, a little preview of what that's going to look like. Um, yeah, so Sedona, we are currently in the the very final process of our, so currently we can hike in Sedona, but the backpacking in Sedona is a, a new thing that they are offering, and the rangers have had to go through and do a whole process of um, surveying the land, making sure the, the tours and stuff that we are going to offer aren't going to negatively affect the area, um, and then they have a lot of really stringent regulations to make sure that the area does still stay pristine for everybody. Um, so we're really excited to get out to Sedona. Those are really going to be more two- and three-day tours. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to be nearly as rugged, and they're not going to be quite as far just because there's not as much space to travel on in Sedona. And there's a lot of trails, but they don't all necessarily connect up the right way. So either way, those are going to be a little bit easier of tours, the two-, three-day Sedona tours. And then Yosemite, we can do anything from two to six days in Yosemite. So that gives us a lot of option over there as well. And, um, and it also works into our business because, obviously, it's hot here during the summer. It's yeah. beautiful in Yosemite. So, um, so those, those tours are going to be a really great expansion for us this year, and we're really looking forward to it. So with the Yosemite tour, is that something that you leave from here, or do they fly into a certain place and you do a pickup? So with Yosemite, you'll actually have to get yourself to the park. All of our Arizona tours, because we are based out of Arizona, we do provide transportation from Phoenix. So you'd be able to fly directly into Sky Harbor for a Phoenix tour or anything uh, Grand Canyon, Sedona. You'd be able to fly directly into Phoenix. For Yosemite, you'll actually have to get yourself to the park. We'll meet you in the park. We'll provide you with all of your gear, all the food. Um, we'll camp with you the night before we actually end up hiking out. And then uh, also, if you'd like to stay for an easy camping night after we're done, that's also an option there. But you will need to get yourself to the park for Yosemite. That's great. So of the people that have gone on more of the, uh, uh, the discovery tracks, maybe the three or four day, are there any fun stories of people that have come uh, maybe from a certain place in the world or anything you could think of that's, that's unique? Hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to think. There's, there's always little interesting, unique things about certain people. Um, I have so many, so many things. Well, th it's always interesting when you get people who are, and it's usually men, who are right about that 60, just over 60 age, that still think they're 45, but yeah. their bodies are 60. And so the, they're always a little bit interesting when it's, um, when you have to inform them you're, you're 60 at this point. <laughs> right. Please keep that in mind, because 45... 35, you're still, you could do a lot of stuff, but the downhill on your knees as you get older is hard. It just gets harder. The older you get, the, the harder the downhill is on, on the joints. Mm -hmm. And so it's always interesting having that conversation with people um, just to make sure that they are getting on the right tour. Because we have had it where someone really thinks that they can do something and they find out that they can't. And it's always a bummer to find out that you can't when you're a mile or two in and you have to turn around and hike out. And so that, I would say, is usually the, the most interesting situation that we have with people. Otherwise, um, there's always cool little experiences where people will see, uh, like, the, uh, like, the mountain sheep or the, the rams in the Grand mm -hmm. Canyon. Or sometimes you'll see deer. It's cool little wildlife run into the California condors. So those are always cool little experiences that people have. Um, but as far as dealing with clients, I would say making sure people are – Getting onto the right tour is always my most interesting experience. Makes sense. And I know with your process, don't you take people through an onboarding to make sure that they are put into the correct trip just for them? We do, yes. So whenever I'm first working with somebody to set up a hike, uh, we always try and get kind of a baseline of what is, what's your physical activity right now. And then we always make sure that it is very clear what the expectation is of um, what your physical fitness level needs to be in order to do these tours. Mm -hmm. Duck out tours, we can really take anybody on. The Discovery Treks tours, you do need to be in good physical condition in order to do these tours because you don't want to get helicoptered out from the bottom of the Grand Canyon. It's really expensive. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we definitely do, we work with people a lot to make sure that 
they are getting on the right tour because it's also not fun to be on a tour that is too strenuous for you. And I, they, when you're struggling to the point that you hate being there, there's no reason to take that kind of tour, especially when we have options that you don't have to hate doing it. You can actually really enjoy it. It's, mm -hmm. it's not going to be too much for you physically. And, and yeah, so I mean, we can definitely do a wide range of tours for people, but um, not everybody has to be Iron Man ready to go backpacking. Makes sense. So, so what's the favorite thing about what you do that keeps you wanting to grow this business? My favorite thing about what I do, I, I truly love being outside and having the freedom to, to do what I like to do. This is the kind of stuff that I do on my own. Um, and so high, this high adventure type activity is something fun for me and being able to do it for work is, is just even better. Um, Cause now I have, I have so much more understanding and really appreciation for the outdoors since I've started working um, in this particular industry. And it wants me to be able to expand my uh, my product offering into a lot more specialized areas. So like in the future, I'd love to be able to offer rafting or um, maybe high altitude climbing or other things. Because a lot of the guides that we have do a lot of this really, really cool, extreme stuff. And, um, and there's maybe not always a great way for other people to learn how to do it or get into these things unless you know somebody who's already into it. So like high altitude canyoneering or something mm -hmm. like that. You're probably not going to just go out and start trying to do on your own. But I have a bunch of guides who are really very good at these things, and I know that they would love to take other people out on these types of activities. And so in the future, I would love to be able to give my guides that platform to be able to offer the things that they love as well to other people. So kind of, kind of as a, um, I don't want to call it a franchise, but as like an extension of my business, being able to really um, – highlight what they are great at and what they love to do if that makes sense so that's i would like to expand my business to that into other more specialized areas and then also highlighting what my guides love to do okay no it makes a lot of sense kind of different niches that you can build programs for that people would be interested in those specific things exactly how have you marketed yourself how have you found to get people to your business and, and to get them on the tours what's been successful for you so I have slightly different strategies for both Duck Out and Discovery Treks because we are working with, um, with different markets, basically. So mm -hmm. as I stated earlier, the Duck Out tours are mostly people who are already here in town, um, here visiting family, friends, just here for whatever reason, right? It's nice out. Um, so with that, a lot of my marketing is going to be Facebook specific to an area. So like right to the Scottsdale area, very specific, targeted um, pay-per-click marketing online. I also do a lot of um, just network marketing through other businesses and mm -hmm. working, with, working with companies that have lots of travelers coming through them. So destination management companies that work with big corporations that are coming here for um, events and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll work with the, I'll call them the rabbit farmers, the mm -hmm. people who are bringing in the people consistently that would want to go on my tours versus me trying to go find each individual person. Makes sense. Um, and so my other rabbit farmers, quote unquote, are the concierge at hotels. So I do a lot of um, just relationship marketing with concierge at hotels and other just people in the travel industry. So there's a pretty good referral based network for in town tours. Now for the for Discovery Trek tours, these tours are people are coming from around the world specifically to come on these tours. So most of that marketing is going to be directed in the web sphere, um, whether it's pay per click, whether it's SEO on my own website. That's really how I've done most of it to this point. Um, email marketing campaigns through so getting leads through my website, Facebook, etc. Using email marketing campaigns to keep those people engaged over time. Um, sending different ads and stuff kind mm -hmm. of around, um, and then as well as just investing in getting my website to show up organically online. Uh, so those are the main things that I've really focused on at this point to really market my business. No, I like that because you've really specifically identified an audience for each one, and then you have a different strategy for each. And that's something that's so important for any business out there is you always start with the audience. Who am I trying to reach? Where are they geographically? And now how do I get that message out? And a lot of times they're completely different from one business to another, mm -hmm. even if sometimes it's in the same vertical like yours, exactly. right? Yep. So that's great. So you've been in business for quite a few years now. 
Um, what are some what are some things that you have learned? What are like three takeaways you would give to an entrepreneur that is starting their own business that would help them? You think in their career? Well, so I was I was kind of thinking about this earlier, and one of the things, at least within a, a marketing standpoint, so one of my takeaways for that would be, um, and because I I find myself doing this to myself, unfortunately sometimes, is to log or have like a regular logbook of changes that I make to my marketing materials. So that when I look back three, six months back into history, I can say, what changed? What, what did I do at this point in time that caused this change in, in business? Um, so keeping general notes or ideas of what you've done in the past so that you can make reasonably strategic decisions in the future based off of what you've done in the past. Um, second is don't stress too hard because if you stress too hard, especially when you're starting a new business, you will get down on yourself and then you will probably fail, quite frankly. If there, things come at you and you, you kind of have to roll with the punches sometimes. And that's, that's one thing that I've definitely noticed, especially in the outdoor industry. Backpacking tours, not everything always goes right. And so I could be pulling my hair out some days or take a goose fob of breath and work through it. And so I would say that's one of the big things that has helped me not lose my mind and keep going is to try not to stress about all the little things and just, just keep your eye on the goal. Um, and then from there, I'd also say don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, there's, there's so many people that have so much information outside of, of what you have. And quite frankly, you just you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so asking for help has been uh, something that I've done all along the ways. There, I've worked with a lot of people who just know a lot more about the stuff than I do. And I, I try and tap into those resources if, if I have a question or, or need to know. If uh, one of the things that I've always kind of liked is if you don't ask the question, the answer is no. Right. Period. Nope. So that's uh, yeah. And it's kind of the same thing. If you don't take the shot, you'll never make the goal. Yeah, you have not because you ask not. I mean, it's it goes back to, you know, biblical terms, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's, uh, it's amazing that you say that because one of the things as an entrepreneur, you talked about not stressing. Well, you could, you never know exactly what's going to happen on a day to day basis, or even when you draw out a business plan, you don't know how that business plan is going to play out in the market. And when something comes up and you're stressing about every little thing, it basically doesn't allow you to be the best you can be for all the things you can control. Because usually they're mm -hmm. uncontrollables. Um, and it's, it's, it's tough. So it's good that you have that mindset. And obviously, you, you know, you've know you gotten to a, a good degree of success. And I see your, your business trending uh, like crazy right now, which is a lot of fun. So I'm excited about your new tours that are coming on, uh, as well as the current ones. So before we go, do you have any asks of our audience? Anything you'd like them to do? Um, I would say if, uh, if you have any avid outdoorsmen that would love to go check out some of the amazing things that uh, Arizona has to offer, send them our way. We'd love to show them the beauties of Arizona. Um, and then check us out. We'd love to, love to take you out. Where, where can they find you? Um, so you can find us online at duckout.com. That's D-U-K-O-U-T dot com. And then we also have Discovery Treks, T-R-E-K-S dot com. Um, both of those websites, they are separate websites. Uh, they look pretty similar. You'll tell the branding's kind of, kind of similar. Um, but either way, you can check out all of our tours there, get in touch with us, and uh, we'd love to take you out. Awesome. And we'll put our, the Facebook and Instagram and the website links in uh, the show notes here. So, hey, thanks so much for being on the show today, Adam. It was a lot of fun. i um, excited about your, your businesses, so, so keep on um, you know, growing them. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week of Aftershock Online. We look forward to seeing you soon.